Good morning. My name is Elbert Bennett. I am currently serving as Magistrate of District 1. I'm serving in my uh, fifth term. My wife and I have been married for, be married for 50 years come December the 23rd. We have two children, uh, Molly, Molly Tabor. She teaches uh, first grade at Crittenden County School System. Our son, John, is an agriculture major for Murray State University, and he works on the farm, and also he help, uh, works with BGB Trucking Company. We have two grandchildren, uh, Molly, uh, Ellie Grace McGowan. She's an honors uh, presidential scholar at Murray State University. She was just elected president of student government at Murray. Our grandson, um, Justin Tabor, He's a, he works uh, with uh, Bridgestone Tar. He graduated from uh, the Welding Institute in Flemingburg, Kentucky as a certified welder. Uh, as I said earlier, I've, uh, I farm, uh, beef, raise beef cattle. I have for 45 plus years. And, uh, and hoping that I'm not looking to retire anytime soon. My wife is retired after 27 plus years. Question one, what do you perceive as the major issue facing the citizens of your district and explain how you as a member of the court could address this issue? Issue number one, Highway 641 bypass. That has been an issue for many years. I was in, uh, involved in that when it first started. I have, uh, I have uh, voiced my complaint about that road because they're leaving 91 untouched. 91 is a main traffic for our school children. And I have voiced my concern that uh, what is it gonna take? A bad wreck for the transportation department to say, hey, look, we need to take care of our existing roads or do continue to build new roads. That is one, one of the major complaints in, our, in my district. And also Highway 70. Uh, I've had a lot of truck drivers have talked about that in the last two or three years. And also uh, regulations that, that's coming down from the state. Those are issues that right now that has been brought to my attention many times. Uh, although and another issue is uh, which should be addressed more by the city council, Alfred Onya, and the mayor, but I'm willing to help. I just talked to one of our state senators, state representatives earlier this morning, and we talked about water lines, uh, existing water lines. Some of these water lines have been put in in the early 60s, and they're very old asbestos type line. And I, I'll do whatever I can to work with the, with the, uh, with the, uh, the government or whoever's in charge of that uh, to help maybe get funds for water lines. And I have talked to some financial groups in the past that's willing to come and sit down and talk about this issue. About this issue. And, uh, <clears throat> and another thing that's facing uh, that I've been discussed is law enforcement. More law enforcement in, uh, in the Fredonia area. That is one thing and uh, illegal drug use, but that's a problem that's all over the, all over the county that I will probably talk about more uh, later. Question two, what do you believe is the major issue or issues facing Caldwell County that the fiscal court could address? Explain how you as a member of the fiscal court could help address this issue or issues. One of the main, right now, we're reeling from a F4 tornado. And that is gonna be affecting our county for uh, a few years. Not only have we, we have had loss of lives, loss of homes, loss of personal property, and also a lot of these people didn't have insurance. Those are things that we have got to, we have got to, after this tornado, we have got to continue to work with these people and to be there for them whenever we're called upon. And as a court member, I will do my part, whatever I need to do uh, to encourage the federal government to stay involved, to see that monies are brought in, uh, in for uh, uh, these people. 
And also, uh, as it was been mentioned, as I mentioned earlier, drugs, drug use all over Caldwell County, illegal drugs. And that's where we feel like, I feel like it, we need more showing of uh, deputies or law enforcement uh, throughout, the, throughout the county. And uh, another thing is uh, unfunded mandates. I know some may not understand what unfunded mandates are, but I do. They're, they're uh, implemented by the state and sit down and expecting the county to implement these, uh, these laws or these uh, 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 things that they come up with, but they don't send money with, the, uh, with these uh, projects. I have sat in and I have testified when I was president of the Kentucky Magistrates Association and also as president of the Kentucky Association of Counties. I have sat in and uh, on these uh, hearings many times and have testified uh, in, uh, on the behalf of county government and I will continue to do so. And as my, as my term as president of the Kentucky Association of Counties, I had the opportunity to serve as chairman of the legislative committee every Monday morning from December, the end of, uh, end of December until the 1st of April, I was in Frankfurt, regardless of the weather. And those trips were paid by myself. I had received no reimbursement from the state or from CACO or from the county. But I represented our county and all 120 counties as a chairman of that board. And because of that, I was in, uh, at the Capitol many days a meeting with our state representatives and state senators. Question three. Would you take the time to inspect the roads, so on and so forth, in your district? Why or why not? And explain what authority you as a magistrate have over the roads in your district. Yes, uh, that, is, uh, that is something I've done. I uh, started doing it before I was ever elected, uh, uh, almost 20 years ago and we continue to do it. My wife and I, we enjoy getting out in the afternoon and just driving the road, taking one, uh, one section. And a lot of times we'll be in Preston to drive back, uh, back home and uh, maybe just take, uh, uh, just hit a uh, county road and just drive it. And, uh, but yes, I uh, inspect the road often. Uh, whenever I get a phone call from someone and tell me I will uh, let the road supervisor know and ask him if I need to come with him or if I need to meet him, uh, and then in, in return, I will call the, uh, the person that have uh, notified me and let them know uh, what I have done. I, uh, it's always been my uh, theory to uh, get it done uh, sooner than later, and, uh, and, and that's what I've, uh, I, and I will continue to do as a magistrate. I'm, as I said earlier, I'm at home all the time as a self-employed person, so it's easy for me uh, to uh, go and to check on a uh, issue that um, maybe somewhere in the county if I'm called on. Question four. There has been discussion of a city county government consolidation. Would you be in favor of such a consolidation of city county government? Explain why or why not? Uh, no, I would not be in favor. Uh, I have said in uh, as I was president elect of the Kentucky Association of County, County I sat in with, uh, with the president of the League of Cities. Uh, I saw right then that, uh, that they did not want to work with county government. And I have met with uh, uh, attorneys just this past week when I was in Frankfurt about this issue. One gentleman that's an attorney for the Kentucky Association of Counties he said to me, he said, Elbert, I've, I've served as an attorney for the League of Cities. I have served as an attorney for the Department for Local Government. And I am now, as you know, as an uh, uh, attorney for Kentucky Association of Counties. He said, we have found out that, uh, that there's no money saved when in a city county government. And, uh, and I'm certain that uh, in Caldwell County, and like a lot of counties, they would, uh, the people in the counties would, would be very much against it. Is there anything you'd like to add in closing? Uh, yes, I would. I know we, uh, we hear to talk a lot about broadband. Uh, although that is a, a county, a local and a state issue, but it's, it's a federal issue. We've got to have federal monies uh, 
for that project. Just this morning, I talked with uh, with one of our center, uh, state representatives, and, uh, and, and we talked about this project. And he told me, he said, Elbert, that there's over $300 million have been allocated for rural broadband in Kentucky. And uh, he said there's been millions and millions of dollars uh, that has been allocated at the federal level. So this is going to be something that's going to be here sooner than later. And, uh, and, and another thing in closing, I would like to say that I've served the people of Caldwell County for almost 20 years. And also, before that, I served 20 years on the Fredonia City Council. And besides that, I have spent many, many hours working with our local youth, been involved, fundraisers, and so forth. And uh, that is our, as I've always said, our youth is our future. And I would appreciate the vote of the uh, of the people again in District 1 on May the 17th. Mr. Bennett, thank you for your time. Yes, um, my name is Jan Veed and I am a magistrate candidate for the Caldwell County District 1, which consists of the precincts of Fredonia, Donaldson, White Sulphur, and it encompasses a portion, a small portion inside the city of Princeton. I have 19 years of banking experience, which includes opening new accounts, CDs, IRAs, um, annuities, consumer and mortgage loans, home equity lines of credit. Uh, this year will give me 20 years in city government as deputy city clerk, and those duties have included running uh, account payables, handling payroll, and reporting to the Kentucky retirement system. I have grown up on the Old Fredonia Road on my parents' farm. Um, my husband and I made our home just down the road from there. That's where we raised our daughter, Sarah, and that is a part of our county that we call Home Sweet Home. Question one, what do you perceive as the major issue facing the citizens of your district and explain how you as a member of the court could address this issue? Okay, one of the issues that's come to my attention recently is uh, where Mayor Seibert was on WPKY and he was speaking about the water infrastructure in the city of Fredonia. And it's such an aging facility that um, there are repair issues, he said, basically every day, sometimes multiple times through the day. And so um, that serves 401 people, residents in the city of Fredonia, but it also, those water lines serve a thousand people. So that is an important issue that um, needs to be addressed. And so I support seeking funding through state and federal and working with the Penny Ryle Area Development District to secure funding to try to upgrade those structures so that they can save money on labor and costs and the upkeep of constant repairs and um, wasted water, the cost of that, and to further stretch the budget for the city so that it can take on more projects that are important to the residents. Question two. What do you believe is the major issue or issues facing Caldwell County that the fiscal court could address and explain how you as a member of the fiscal court could help address this issue or issues. Okay. Um, of course, one of the major issues is always having the budget and the funds to provide all the services that the residents need and expect. One of today's issues that I think is very important for us is the lack of affordable, dependable uh, fiber broadband across our county. Um, it, in today's economy, it's just a necessity, and um, our kids needed it when they were doing NTI days during the pandemic. Our farmers need it for their equipment, for diagnostics. Telehealth is ever more important for our aging population, and um, due to the pandemic, there are more than ever jobs that can be done from the home if you have reliable source of internet without the latency of the the things that we have in the county now. And um, there are opportunities that are missed due to the lack of that with people being able to take online college courses. 
um, our college kids and adults to be able to work that into their schedule when they can. And um, so one of my goals is to look for ways that we can fund and obtain and expand reliable wired broadband across all of our county. Question three. Would you take the time to inspect the roads, so on and so forth, in your district? Why or why not? And explain what authority you as a magistrate have over the roads in your district. Yes, I plan to inspect the roads, um, especially when a resident gives me a concern regarding an issue on their roads. Um, I've already noticed some roads in my district during my campaign that need some attention soon. And um, shortly after I'm elected, if I'm elected to this position, I'll be able to allocate more time to be able to go over the roads. And um, I consider a magistrate's responsibility to be a liaison between the resident and the road department and the fiscal court and to use our budget as wisely as possible to um, make the necessary repairs to our roads and bridges. Question four. There has been discussion of a city-county government consolidation. Would you be in favor of such a consolidation of city-county government? Explain why or why not. Okay, considering consolidation, my question is, how would you, how would you have equal representation for the city, for the residents of City of Fredonia, City of Princeton, and all of our county residents? Because we have a pretty vast county. I'm learning just on one fourth of it, driving it. And um, I feel like local governments can better represent their residents and their interest when held accountable to those residents. Um, so if a total consolidation is to be considered, I would have to have the pros and cons listed on how equal representation would be possible. And I think it should be put as an issue for those residents to vote on how they would like to be represented. And um, I do, however, support interlocal agreements where the cities and the county can work together to maintain the benefit of scale, an economy to uh, combine forces to, you know, like on trash pickup, recycling, things of that nature, that the power of more can bring down costs. And in closing, is there anything else you'd like to add? Yes. Um, during my campaign, I have enjoyed driving over the roads in my district. I still have some that I've got to cover. And um, I've enjoyed talking with the people that have been kind enough to open the door and talk to me. And um, I ask for your vote and support in the upcoming primary. The primary is going to be the deciding factor for who is your magistrate for District 1. So I would like to ask for your vote and support. And thank you for letting me be here today. Ms. V, thank you for your time. Good afternoon, everyone. Hi, my name is Donnie Conway. I am seeking the office of Magistrate, 1st District in Caldwell County. Uh, I am from Caldwell County, born and raised in this area. I live in Fredonia, have all my life. Uh, I'm married, have three wonderful children, all pretty much grown now. The youngest is uh, just about to finish college at Murray, so proud of all of them. Um, I am very uh, involved in the community at large uh, in Fredonia specifically. I'm on many committees. I do a lot of things with the ballpark, with the, with the church. Uh, I am uh, very active in my church. Uh, as a conservative Christian, I, uh, uh, my wife and I both have been blessed with the opportunity right now that we lead the youth program in Fredonia at First Baptist. Uh, love that, love having that opportunity. Uh, I just uh, feel that I'm always should be fulfilled with everything that I'm doing. So uh, the reason I'm running for magistrate is that I feel that I can bring more to the court here at Caldwell County and that I can serve each and every one of you in the district uh, in a better capacity than we have right now. Thank you. Question one. What do you perceive as the major issue facing the citizens of your district, explain how you, as a member of the court, could address this issue. Okay, thank you. There are many major issues facing my district and the county to include, but not limited to, 
the need for broadband internet services and increased police patrols within my district. But I feel that the greatest issue is still county road conditions, specifically flooding issues along roadways and low-lying bridge areas within my district. Many of our county roads within District 1 suffer major flooding conditions, which then result in further damaging already worn and tattered roads. This is an issue that has plagued our county infrastructure for many years. <clears throat> As a member of the fiscal court, I can lobby to increase funding to fix the root cause of many roads deteriorating as they are now, which is mainly because of water damage. We, as a functioning fiscal court, can levy the state for engineering assistance to examine the flooding issues, water runoffs, and drainage work. This is a vital to maintain our county infrastructure and to cut down on the continuous repair costs to our county, which continue to grow exceedingly each and every year. I have spent many hours this past year alone driving our roads within the county, talking to citizens within the county that live on and drive these roads daily. Secondary to this is the issue with state maintenance on our state highways within District 1, specifically secondary state highways. This has become a greater safety issue within the past few years as we have seen major decreases in the likes of mowing the right-of-ways, for example, to the point that this is beginning to endanger drivers for their visibility of other drivers, the option to see deer before as they approach, uh, and the safety of moving farm equipment within our county from one field to the other. I would work extremely hard to develop new and workable relationships with our state maintenance officials at the district level, regional level, and state level as well. This relationship is critical to increasing this much needed maintenance work, specifically back to our state secondary highways. Thank you. Question two. <clears throat> What do you believe is the major issue or issues facing Caldwell County that the fiscal court could address? Explain how you as a member of the fiscal court could help address this issue or issues. Great question, thank you. The county has several major issues that they are facing to include budget constraints, of course, but I feel the current major issue within our county is the lack of skilled labor I believe the devastating tornado on 10 December has shown us as a county just how vulnerable we are when it comes to housing and the lack of skilled labor. The major issue I'm speaking of is the lack of construction developers within our region and the lack of workers that they need to complete these projects. In talking with several residents of this county after the storms, most of the concern was with the delay in construction and rebuild due to lack of skilled labor forces within our county. There are also many families that were not directly affected by the storm and have started their own construction projects here or there, yet the construction wait time has, con has increased significantly within our region and rightly so due to the current number of houses that are being rebuilt. I feel that the fiscal court could play a major role in developing a young, motivated and skilled labor force. One step in this direction would be, as a county, to further embrace work-ready community standards, which Caldwell County is currently not. Caldwell has a designation of work-ready in progress at this time, which is a step in the right direction, but we can do much better, I think. I feel that we should stand with not behind our county school boards and do even more. We need to focus on better supporting our own career and technology centers by assisting with student job placements after high school, advertising these opportunities that students do have, continue to work on increasing our high school graduation rates, and most of all, and this is important, change the cultural thinking that the only way to succeed in life 
is if we have a four-year degree. Many of you know, or at least are familiar with, the name Mike Rowe. You know, he's the dirty jobs guy on TV that we've watched for several years. In 2014, Mr. Rowe testified to Congress on this exact issue. The lack of skilled workforce within our country, his testimony to Congress laid out the, per the peril that we as a community are facing still today. There are many, many successful people within our community that will tell you that skilled labor is one of the greatest successes you can ever have, and I would definitely agree with them. There are steps that we as the fiscal court can take, as you can see, to better our communities and way of life here in Caldwell County. Thank you. Question three. Would you take the time to inspect the roads, so on and so forth, in your district? Why or why not? And explain why, explain what authority you as a magistrate have over the roads in your district. Absolutely. Of course I would inspect the roads. I already do that now. Why would I do this? Because I really care about the residents within my district and within the county. Many residents live along these county roads that are excessively rough or broken up. With vehicle costs these days have skyrocketed and the cost of repair is even worse, it is imperative that the roads they live on be passable to the extent that the roads do not cause damage to their expensive vehicles. As a resident of Caldwell County, specifically District 1, I travel many of these roads each week and daily. I am seeing many problems with not only our state highways, but also our county roads as well. Driving through Cresswell, Farmersville, White Sulphur, Walnut Grove area, Crider, even the roads off 62, and even Fredonia. There are problems that we need to address in each of these areas. By saying this, I would encourage our residents to speak up to your magistrate and let them know where the problem is. If I were elected as your magistrate, I have vowed to be available to each resident within my district. I will have a designated phone with phone number which I will provide to each resident in my district that they will have direct, quick access to me at all times. In regards to authority, as magistrate within my district, I would have management responsibility over budgets, identifying and fixing needed problems, and the feasibility of fixing those problems. My responsibility extends to allocating the fiscal court the need of fixing these road problems that are identified. With that said, as you all know, or may know, we are limited to budgets and money availability. I would love to fix and newly pave each and every road in this county. I would love it. But with a budget, one of my responsibilities would be to the assess immediate needs utilizing safety factors, availability of county resources, and to get the problems fixed with those resources. These are just some of the factors that go into road repair and upgrades and what my responsibilities would be. I also believe that one of my responsibilities is to lobby and advocate for my district and for my county at the state and national levels. With this said, if I made trips to Frankfurt, those, vi those visits would be purposeful and work-related only. I would focus on the need of the county and my district. Thank you. Question four. There has been discussion of a city-county government consolidation. Would you be in favor of such a consolidation of city-county government? Explain why or why not. Okay. This has been a discussion for years, off and on. My answer is going to be twofold because I can't answer this question yes or no at this time. I can only tell you what would be needed in order for me to make a firm standard answer. And as you know, consolidation, what we best know it as is the metropolitan, like Metro Nashville, Metro Louisville. And that's of course where uh, city and county governments merge as one. Uh, number one, to sometimes cut down on uh, uh, 
individuals working within the government, the numbers that we need. Uh, sometimes that's to consolidate budgets and more focus on certain areas. There are many things that would have to take effect for me to make a firm decision on this. Um, I have researched uh, this for quite some time. Uh, off and on I've researched and, and looked it up and I've studied Nashville area for example and I've studied the Louisville area here in Kentucky. Uh, there are some great things about combining the governments to one, but there are also a lot of negatives. And to know which way our county and city of Princeton would want to go would be the effect of how I would vote on that. Uh, the number one thing I can tell you is the only way that I would ever be for this is if it would benefit all of Caldwell County and not just some of Caldwell County. My concern at this time is that you know we, we need to look ahead and think how would we focus these monies, these budgets, and, and where would we focus that money to. Uh, I don't want government to ever forget that there is a county. Uh, I know that we look for consolidation and we tend to want to focus more on where the majority of people are. And that's great, and we should. But we still have a county we still are responsible for this great tract of land that we've been given responsibility to. Uh, and it's all of Caldwell County. So I can't answer yes or no to your question, and I'm sorry at this time. But if this does come up in uh, the fiscal court or in, in the city courts or however it may come up, uh, I can promise you that I will do in-depth studies on what they're wanting and what proposals they're wanting to put in forth in front of the county uh, before I would ever make my decision. Thank you. And in closing, is there anything else you'd like to add? Well, no. Uh, I would first like to take this moment to uh, thank you, thank the banner for this opportunity uh, to share my thoughts to the citizens of District 1 and to our great county. Caldwell County District 1 residents, I want you to sincerely I want to sincerely express my humble gratitude to have this opportunity to run for office as your magistrate. I feel I have the experience, dedication, and humble heart to graciously serve our residents of District 1 and to serve Caldwell County as a whole. I would stand for each resident within my district, Republic or Democrat, because we are all community regardless of your voting affiliation. I vow to serve you here within the county, being available to you daily by phone, by email, or Facebook. I would welcome conversations within casual passing out in the community, whether it's just to say hello or to discuss a problem within your area of residence. I will work hard with our county government to greatly improve infrastructure within our community and to be a fiscally responsible official. I will work hard to build stronger relationships with other county officials and with state and federal offices. My goal as your magistrate is to be your voice, to be the voice of District 1. Thank you and God bless. Mr. Conway, thank you for your time. Thank you, Chad.